Hello students. Right now we're going to learn about molar volume. Say it with me, molar volume. All right, students, so let's review with these first two questions. Um, what is molar mass? Mol molar mass is the mass measured in grams of one mole of stuff, of anything. That could be H2O or CO2 or, or uh, aluminum hydroxide or magnesium nitrate. The molar mass is the ma number of grams, that's the mass, of one mole of stuff. And we know what Avogadro's number is, that's called the mole. Avogadro's number is the mole. So what is Avogadro's number? Is the number the number of one mole of stuff. And we know that that number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So that means that if I have um, my 18.02 grams per one mole of H2O, what that means, what this one mole of H2O means is that if there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of H2O, um, that means it's going to weigh 18.02 grams. Just to be clear, the word mole and the word molecule are not the same thing, okay? They're not, it's not shorthand. They're two different words. And don't hate me, I'm just a messenger. Okay, so you can take a guess. What do you think molar volume would be? What do you think molar volume is going to be? Well, it's going to be... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it's going to be the volume of one mole of stuff. In this case, that stuff has to be a gas when we're talking about molar volume. It has to be some gaseous compound. So like the oxygen we're breathing, the nitrogen that's in the atmosphere, uh, the carbon dioxide that's coming out of um, uh, cars and airplanes, um, and methane that's coming out of cows. Yeah. All right, so... Um, what is volume again? We talked about mass, we, and we, um, we know that mass is the amount of matter in something. And remember, remember, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So when we're measuring mass, we're measuring the amount of matter in something. If, if, uh, if I have more mass than you, that means I have more matter in my body than you do. Okay, so uh, what is volume? Remember, volume is uh, how much space something takes up. So let's write that. how much, we're going to say three-dimensional space something takes. And just because you can't see a gas doesn't mean it's taking up space. Okay, so um, uh, how, volume is how much three-dimensional space something takes up. And you can measure this with liters or milliliters or um, things like that. Okay, um, so Gases can take up all sorts of uh, different shapes and volumes, even if you can't see them. Um, there's a scary story of this uh, uh, lake in, um, in Africa, and uh, it happened in, I think, like 1990, I want to say. But um, the story goes like this. Um, there was a lake, and uh, there was a really large reservoir of um, uh, carbon dioxide in the lake. And the... Um, uh, kind of like a soda can if you shake up a soda can and you open it then the carbon dioxide escapes really quickly Well one time there was like um, a storm that happened on the lake and it ruffled the top of the lake and it ended up Bubbling up all this carbon dioxide from the earth coming up to the top of the lake And so it bubbled up all this carbon dioxide and you can't see carbon dioxide But once the lake once the carbon dioxide came up from the top of the lake it started falling down the the hill that the that um that the lake was on and you couldn't see it but it was like this river of invisible carbon dioxide that went down and passed through a town and it killed like a thousand people because it suffocated all of them it's kind of a sad crazy story um that happened so why did the carbon dioxide flow down like that and the reason why is because carbon dioxide is more dense than all the other gases in the air like oxygen or nitrogen so it sank to the bottom of um closest to the ground and it flowed past the uh the town and everyone suffocated. Okay, well, yeah, that was a sad story. Okay, gases can take up uh, all sorts of different shapes and volumes. Hot gases take up more space. See these balloons right here? So uh, here's these balloons. If I took this balloon on the bottom and I heated it up, it will take up more space and become like a larger balloon. Yes, that's true, it happens. Um, and then it says, 
and cold gases take up less space. So if I took this balloon on the top and I made it really cold on the outside, it would cool all those gas particles um, on the inside of the balloon. It would turn into a balloon that's smaller. Okay, Gases under high pressure take up less space than gases under low pressure. Like if, for example, um, this balloon on the top was put underwater it would become smaller because the pressure around the balloon, the water pressure around the balloon, would shrink um, the air uh, or the gas that's inside of the balloon. Okay, uh, so there's all these different uh, things that could happen to gases. Um, so uh, scientists need a way to work with gases, so they use something called STP. And when I say work with, work with gases, I mean like. communicate about okay um, so the scientific community is really cool um, it's a global community and the in, and in the world there's hot places and there's cold places and there's places that have high pressure higher pressure like closer to um, sea level like where we are and there's places with lower pressure like up in the mountains so when scientists are doing experiments on gases um, uh, all over the world, they need a way to communicate about them so that there's no confusion. So they use something called standard temperature and pressure. So all of their experiments are converted into, all their experiments with gases are converted into standard temperature and pressure so that the whole scientific community in the, uh, over the whole planet can uh, communicate easily and correctly. Um, so here it is. You don't need to know this. You don't need to know this for this assignment, but standard temperature is uh, zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin standard pressure is one atmosphere okay um, so since everything is standardized um, there's going to be um, a certain volume for gases our molar volume so 22.4 liters for every mole of gas or you could see it in the conversion factor just like this and that's what today is about today is about using molar volume as a conversion factor so to be clear um, this word is the most important and this is at STP okay if it wasn't a gas this wouldn't always be true if it wasn't at STP then this conversion factor wouldn't always be true so there's caveats to this conversion factor meaning that 22.4 liters of gas is one mole of gas at standard temperature and pressure Okay, let's do a few examples. You'll find this to be a lot easier than molar mass because it's just one conversion factor every time. So here's our, uh, here's our um, examples. Okay, so the question is asking, you have 145 liters of nitrogen gas. How many moles of N2 do you have at STP? So step one, I do this one first. What unit are you solving for? It's asking how many moles of nitrogen. So I know that I need to be solving for moles of nitrogen and we know that this is a gas, I'm gonna put a little G next to it. That little G means, in parentheses, means gas. It's like a little subscript G, okay? Um, then we need to know, what are we asking to convert into moles of nitrogen? Well, if we have 145 liters of nitrogen, how many moles is that? Well, we're, we need to convert the 145 liters. 145.00 liters of the nitrogen gas. Okay, and then the last step is put in, putting in the correct conversion factor. Well, we need to be converting from, liters into moles. Okay, so this is a new conversion factor that you, that you just learned from this video. It's called molar volume. It converts liters into moles. And it works, the conversion factor works exactly the same way. You need to place uh, the unit that you want to convert on the bottom and the unit that, unit that you're converting into on the top, okay? So now we know that we can put the molar volume. So what, am I, what number am I gonna put in here? You can pause the video and put in the correct number if you'd like for your notes. Well, I'm gonna put in 22.4 liters for every one mole. So this is the correct conversion factor. If I divide this out on the calculator, Where's my calculator? Darn it, I use my phone. I 
Yep, I have to reinstall the calculator app. That was dramatic. Okay, so if I use the uh, um, calculator, uh, we need to multiply across the numerator and divide by the denominator. I don't really need to multiply by one, so I'm just going to divide by um, 22.4. So starting with 145, uh, and we're going to divide by 22.4. That equals our answer, which is 6.473. So we're just going to round that to two places after the decimal, so 6.47. 6.47 moles of nitrogen gas. Okay, so this many moles of nitrogen gas occupies 145 liters of space, of three-dimensional space. Use your visualization skills and try to imagine that. Um, one good way to visualize uh, molar volume is it's a, about the size of a basketball. About the size of a basketball. Okay, so thinking about like, you know, those liters of Gatorade. If you could fill up a basketball with Gatorade, you could probably fit 22.4 um, Gatorades inside of a basketball. It's a weird image, but I think I think it helps um, get the point across. Okay, let's do one more example. Okay, you can work ahead, pause the video and work ahead if you'd like. Uh, if you have 12.5 moles of chlorine gas, deadly chlorine gas, how many liters of chlorine gas do you have at STP? Well, uh, step number one, what are we solving for? We're solving for how many liters of chlorine gas. So liters of chlorine gas, little g for gas. Um, step number two, what are we converting? Uh, we want to convert 12.5 moles of chlorine gas into liters. So what are we converting? 12.5 moles of the chlorine gas. It's an mol of a mole. Okay, so now we need to use the correct um, conversion factor, and this conversion factor is called molar volume. Okay, um, we need to convert moles into liters, so the mole goes on the bottom, the mole goes on the bottom, and the liter goes on the top. Okay, and now we can put the correct numbers in the correct places. So this time, the 22.4 goes on the top, and the 1 goes on the bottom. Okay, so now we need to multiply across the numerator and divide by the denominator, and we're good. 12.5 times 22.4... I have to I have to double check to make sure my decimals are in the right place and everything. Make sure you do the same. 22.4 equals 280. 280 liters of chlorine. And that, student people, is the whole lesson. Um, I hope you learned something about gases. I hope you learned something about the scientific community. I hope you learned um, how to convert moles to liters and liters to moles of gases at STP. Have a great time doing the worksheet. Bye.